Hello and welcome to this week's Supply and Demand Forex Technical Analysis. My name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at Trading 180. If you're new, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back. I'm glad you're finding my weekly analysis um, useful. And uh, thank you for your comments. And I will endeavor to get back to you all um, at some point. Um, also, if you want to go to your favorite currency pairs, um, it is timestamped in the description box below, as well as uh, some other goodies and content um so from a uh, uh fundamental analysis perspective this week as we always start off on the fundamentals um we have the second quarter or second estimate of the u.s first, uh, first quarter gdp growth and that's uh, going to be important for donald trump especially alongside his uh um, you know, trade war um, with China at the moment from a sentiment perspective. If he's doing better than um, than Ch the Chinese, then he has a bit more leverage when it comes to negotiation. And uh, alongside personal income outlays and PCE price index, which is the Federal Reserve's, I guess, preferred measure of inflation. UK consumer morale, monetary indicators, and um, Eurozone business survey, Germany consumer sentiment. Germany is the uh, the driver of you know really the, the Europe economy. So uh, if Germany starts doing um, slowing down, then Europe as a whole will start to slow down. Um, so retail trade and inflation that's important. China NBS PMIs, Japan consumer confidence, industrial output, as well as uh, India or well, Canada is the main one. Uh, GDP growth rates. I think there's some other stuff as well going on this week on Forex Factory. Um, uh, that is quite important for Canada. I think there's, there's, there's a few speeches going on as well, right? So yeah, Canada GDP on Friday, right? So um, so yeah, that's pretty much what to look out for this week. Um, also, from a sentiment perspective, um, in Europe anyway, we have the uh, the European elections. The results are going to be out. Uh, I think uh, today, Sunday, um, or into the Monday hours. Um, and if you're not up to speed with uh, the European elections, uh, it doesn't come around too often. And there are a uh, quite a few anti-Europe uh, parties that are uh, making headway in the European elections, which is, isn't good for the European elite. Um, potentially a lot of uh, disruption uh, and uh, disruption to the status quo when it comes to, um, you know, Europe policies and moving from Europe moving forward which could all affect um, you know Europe and the euro currency of course we could you know see all that but then not even get a reaction from the market but you know we just uh, we just plan ahead and manage our risk also as well specifically to the UK uh, Theresa May if you don't know as uh, um, the head of the uh, Tory party has you know um, announced her resignation and uh, did a terrible job on trying to negotiate Brexit. So um, the UK is in a bit of uh, a lot of uncertainty. I say a bit, but a lot of uncertainty at the moment, choosing a new leader. So um, sentiment-wise, the pound isn't necessarily um, fantastic, even though it is probably one of the uh, best from a fundamental perspective. And if you want to learn about fundamentals, um, link in the description box below. There is fundamental analysis course, all free, um, and it will show basically i'll show you how the uh, how to trade fundamentals and how to apply it to uh to your uh, to your trading um and why really you should and how to determine value as well as risk on and risk off sentiment so um with that being said let's go on to the technicals and we start off on the dow jones dollar index and the Dow Jones dollar index from last week, we come up into this uh, this higher supply zone right here, and uh, ended up I think uh, selling off. Yep, um, as we came up into an expensive area, and this was from um, if we zoom out a little bit, this is from a supply zone from way back in uh, 2017 right here. So um, yeah. So the, the dollar is probably just pulling back at the moment after we've had one, two, three, four, five, maybe that was six, seven, eight days of, you know, bullishness. It's probably just starting to pull back. So if we, you know, go to um, charts, um, what we're looking for at 
some point is potentially a pullback, depending on obviously what happens this week. But the dollar is really the strongest um, out of the uh, major currencies. This area looks like a great level um, to look for potential long trades on other dollar crosses and the dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength against the major currencies like the euro the pound the yen the australian dollar and uh, if you see um, the dollar index start to uh, turn bullish at any point that really just adds um, some confirmation to your dollar cross pairs and strength so if you're looking to short the dollar you know you'll be looking for again some bearish price action overall on the dollar index if you're looking for some bullish price action you'll be looking for um uh you know anything around here or even currently at the moment um just to confirm you know some some uh, dollar strength on the other dollar crosses um going to the dollar yen and the dollar yen from last week zoom in a little bit um risk being off we uh, had a bit of a sell-off and uh, the Japanese yen does benefit from a risk-off environment, a lot of uncertainty. So um, this is what's happened last week. We kind of broke through this uh, supply zone but then created another supply zone above. So go into the charts. That now from last week got replaced but what we have is a bit of a supply zone right here we also have a level of demand at this area here so now looks like a decent level to try for long trades you also have some uh, horizontal support within that level of demand as well so demand is values proof of value right and then we also have the technical side where we want to look for areas where there will be uh, potentially more demand than supply orders so what I mean by that is you've got horizontal uh, uh, support traders looking to buy here as well you also will have traders who trade dynamic support and resistance you know above so you can see the 100 and the 200 moving averages in this zone and then you have potentially diagonal support and resistance. And again, there's a link in the description box below or up top. I'll try and put it up top if I remember to put it up top um, to a link which uh, talks about the supply and demand equation in support and resistance. So in supply and demand zones um, that add to uh, the, uh, the confluence and uh, potential successful trade. So buying the dollar overall against the yen, decent buy if not lower level around this 109 108 um 50 area just be like i said be careful of either um risk off sentiment trump trade wars etc but also potential dollar weakness right dollar weakness if, if the uh, gdp doesn't doesn't come out um doesn't come out great uh moving on to the dollar swiss dollar swiss is in a nice zone now nice demand zone looking for some potential buys um, the uh, Swiss National Bank has said that the Swiss franc is still highly valued and uh, so they want a cheaper uh, Swiss franc um, so does the, uh, the US dollar want to want a cheaper dollar and so does Donald Trump to be fair but um, I think uh, if risk is on if risk comes back on and things are sorted with the um, with the trade war, etc. Then um, I think the US dollar should want to strengthen. Uh, let's go to the charts and see. Yeah, so we have at the moment a large cluster of demand zones right below. And how we kind of differentiate these zones is really through again horizontal support and resistance. Not every zone of of you know demand or supply um, is necessarily strong we just look at this area as being you know value but then we want to also separate these zones with um, you know diagonal and horizontal support and resistance as well as dynamic so if prices can come down to somewhere like here where you have support 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 well yeah 
so resistance support support bit of resistance here and you've also got the confluence of that diagonal support there and let's see if there's any dynamic yep so you've got the 200 around here as well so this area here around this 998 um, 996 area here would be a brilliant area even right now matter of fact with the 200 so the 100 moving average um, is decent but that would be the better area within this whole cluster of of demand so um, that's how we kind of separate um, our uh, areas large areas of demand and look for the best trading opportunities if you are looking to get short and take advantage of some uh, risk off against the dollar if the dollar starts to weaken then you're looking at this area here so you'll be looking at prices to kind of pull back if they do and then look for shorting trades around here moving on to the dollar cad and the dollar cad really is just it's still kind of within this range for the past um you know maybe about three weeks or so you've got two competing currencies two similar strength currencies at the moment um and uh, this is basically what's happened. Trending markets occur when you have strength versus weakness. When you have strength versus strength or weakness versus weakness, then you have market state. But you can only really determine that through um, fundamentals and sentiment. So really, again, we're, there's nothing really much to be said about the, um, about the dollar CAD. It's literally just a case of understanding where prices you know, may want to come down to. I think that would be a better area of demand and again with supply the more times a level is touched the weaker it becomes so just be careful when it comes to uh, you know trying to get short at any point yeah so we're looking for fresher areas of of demand or supply probably say something like if prices were to break out to the upside and you're looking to get short that is a great area of supply from a demand zone perspective um, probably further down from a value range perspective but you're looking at um, this area still touched several times once twice three times so not necessarily the best area probably this area even further down <coughs> would be uh, more advantageous but this currency pair at the moment not great from a technical perspective um, and you're really kind of um, you know uh, trading strength against strength uh, New Zealand dollar, US dollar. Um, this week, we've had um, really a little bit of a bounce, bit of a pullback. Again, markets don't fall forever. You know, there's profit taking going on, some maybe potential dollar weakness going on. The dollar index did sell off. So now if you're looking to buy the, uh, the New Zealand dollar, you know, here was the time. And again, you had the confluence within this demand zone of some horizontal support. Um, in my opinion, the uh, dollar is still the, uh, the 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 currency to to buy. So we'll be looking for short trades on here. So um, again, any kind of short trades at these supply zones, just to differentiate really um, the better areas of supply within that area. Would you be looking for probably some sort of confluence of support and resistance? So you've got support support there and uh, it's a little bit of an area where you've got support and resistance in that area so you could again just look for zoom down into the lower time frame chart and then look for short trades around here just make sure you've got enough you know to the upside and again if you think that the dollar is going to get weaker the uh, the US dollar is going to get weaker in, in the um, New Zealand dollar is going to get stronger. This was a nice entry right here. Potentially be looking for trades, uh, the price to come back, and then look for you know long trades within this overall demand zone. And if you're looking at the overall range from the high to the low, if this is going to be an expensive area, this has got to be a bargain area. So bargain area for the New Zealand dollar that is. So this is where you'll be looking to uh, potentially establish some long trades. Moving on to the pound dollar. 
and the pound dollar. Pound has suffered from some really bad sentiment this week. Again, a lot of uncertainty regarding uh, the uh, parliamentary leadership, ruling party's leadership. We are starting to see a bit of a tiny uh, pullback, but again, this could just be potential profit taking into next week. Um, the pound, like I said, fundamentally from a uh, GDP interest rate perspective, is uh, probably one of the um, or is one of the uh, leading economies, but it's just a lot of uncertainty regarding businesses. And uh, once Brexit, you know, people, I guess, financial institutions and, and, and businesses know what's happening, um, then they can actually uh, start to look f uh, to to invest back in the uh, British pound. But for now, with all the uncertainty going on, I think the pound is experiencing um, big sell off. So, um, looking at the potential trading opportunities. I'm gonna drag this down a little bit, maybe to around here. Again, it's not necessarily where I draw demand zone, but just demand zones, but just for the sake of uh, clarity, we've got a bit of a supply zone right here. So you'd be looking for short trades anywhere from around now to about the 128 level. So again, go down into a lower time frame chart. <clears throat> then you'd be looking for, and I do like this matter of fact. I do actually like this a nice uh, uh, CPR zone as well. And for those who have uh, um, taken the course, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And you can look at what CPR is also on on the uh, YouTube channel. But this is a nice um, zone to potentially look for short trades continuation wise. <clears throat> if you are looking for buy trades, um, I would probably say a bit deeper down into this area before looking at, you know, looking at buy trades. At the moment, I think that's about it. And then obviously, if that level of supply doesn't work out, then you'd be looking at getting short around here. You do also have, I think the level, yeah. Wider zone, probably say maybe something like that on the underside of that supply zone. Not necessarily the best, but it's there. Support, support, bit of support here, resistance, resistance, bit of support there. So potentially anywhere around, around here and just above that as well. All right, so you've got another little zone. right here as well. So yeah, that's where you'd be looking for short trades if you believe that the British pound is gonna get weaker and the dollar is gonna get stronger. The exchange rate, uh, euro dollar, uh, euro dollar. I'm in this trade, um, I was actually trading it, gonna trade it past this, uh, this demand zone. Um, but it's pulled back on me, no problem. Um, I still believe that the uh, dollar is a stronger pair. So, um, yeah, a lot of traders probably took targets, profit taking around here. This was considered a bargain area for the euro, profit taking problem area around here. Um, so, a nice trade if you manage to take profit from really up here to, uh, you know, down at the lows. And at the moment we're probably around about fair value so um, let's go into euro dollar so if we're looking at the, the range that we're in at the moment the ranging market <clears throat> over the past maybe couple weeks we have yeah, prices are really above that fair value zone so again another potential shorting opportunity into this supply zone even though we've touched this once twice already the better area would be a fresh area of supply to get short if you were looking, looking to buy the US dollar here um, from a demand zone perspective and buying the euro then this was again where you'd be looking to where you should have looked to buy the euro and potentially take advantage of any kind of dollar weakness um, the dollar um, index did start to sell off so there were trading opportunities here um, how far this is going to go to the upside is uh, is anybody's guess, especially you know um, when uh, the market opens um, on the Sunday evening. So um, 
let's see what happens. Um, this could obviously positive news in, in Europe. Um, this could pretty much you know start to go a lot higher. But let's see what happens. Pound dollar. Oh, sorry, pound dollar. Again, with risk off, you can see what's pretty much happened over the past you know month or so. The Japanese yen has strengthened, <clears throat> not because there was a engulfing candle up here. Right, price is not the reason why um, candlesticks are not the reason why uh, prices move down. It's to do with you know um, financial institutions, sentiment, and value. Right, so risk off. <clears throat> this is what pretty much um, occurs in a risk off environment. So um, again, right now you're looking at any short trades back up into any kind of supply zones. If you're looking to take advantage of the Japanese yen, if you're looking to buy the euro, risk comes back on a little bit, some positive sentiment, then you'd be looking at probably buying at any point right now would be really the, uh, the zone to look for buy trades. Within that wider demand zone as well, Probably got an obvious level of support and resistance, probably right at the lows. I guess there may be something around here slightly as well. I'll probably say something there. <clears throat> but for now, this is pretty much where you'd be looking for buy trades. If that doesn't work out, then around this level. This one two oh probably one two one level to one two oh um five level half number but again risk would have to be really you know come back on into the market for for you to try and buy this uh this currency pair going on to the Aussie dollar so Aussie dollar this week um touch this demand zone just at the, pretty much you know uh, to the tip and then you know prices have kind of gone sideways this week and potentially um, a little bit of a pullback but again I think overall the dollar US dollar is the uh, stronger of the two this is a nice I think it's a nice supply zones right above it so we're looking for any kind of pullbacks into that area so buying opportunities right now you're looking for maybe a bit of a pullback before looking to get long. If you're looking to get short, then I like this area and this whole zone in order for short trades. Um, in a risk-off environment, the dollar does do um, better than the uh, than the Australian dollar, but again, it depends on the, what the risk-off is. Um, China slowing down is going to affect the uh, Australian dollar a lot more than the US dollar. As uh, the Australian dollar, um, China is. Australia's main trading partner. So, um, any kind of risk off, and you're seeing this obviously take place right now, right? It's going to affect the Australian dollar more than it would affect affect the uh, US dollar. The US dollar being, again, I think maybe the second um, largest economy in the world. Um, so yeah, those are pretty much your uh, your options for this week. If you want to take advantage of some dollar dollar weakness. Um, this week and a bit of a pullback then pretty much you're looking at maybe a bit of a pullback before looking at long trades and finally the Aussie yen and the Aussie yen this week <clears throat> kind of gapped up there was some positive sentiment I think with the uh, Australian elections but again it only turned out to be positive sentiment but this week if you do um, if things are sorted from a risk perspective then this looks like an absolute bargain price against the uh, the, the Japanese yen. The Bank of Japan actually won a cheaper uh, yen, and you can see that overall with the risk off sentiment, uh, the yen has been strengthening, which is problematic for the Bank of Japan. So um, potentially we could always see a pullback. The markets have really, you know, been falling and really hasn't, you know, um, made any kind of significant pullback. So we're probably due some sort of pullback at some point. You can see where prices have come down in this maybe double bottom type pattern potentially you know we could get a bit of a pullback up to a level at least you know a 50% level of you know that that move from that high to that low back into some sort of fair value area <clears throat> 
if you are looking to take advantage of some risk off then here isn't necessarily the best area to to, to look to buy the Japanese yen you'd be looking at probably here or here right in order to get uh, you know short the uh, Australian dollar and long the um, I say long but buy the Japanese yen but the yen economically isn't fantastic so this would be purely a risk off place so um yeah um that's it for this week um hope you enjoyed it please like subscribe share and uh if you have any comments i would endeavor to get back to you as soon as possible i will get back to those you know uh traders who uh who have left comments as well this week thank you and uh again have hope you have a great trading week take care